to discuss the budget, 2013 budget, I should add. Laura Meckler, Wall Street Journal White House correspondent, is with us down in Washington, D.C. Laura, how come you're not with the, uh, the, the incoming Chinese prime minister? I, I'm sorry? Are you, are you going to go visit the White House later and visit with the Chinese incoming prime minister? Yes. Well, I've been watching that visit all day long, actually. Um, we're very interested in that visit with the Vice President Xi. So I, uh, all of the events are open to just a very small pool of reporters. They don't want to subject him to uh, the full throttle U.S. media. But I have been watching it very right. carefully. They don't want to subject you to Laura. You, or rather, uh, what's his name? Vice Pre Vice, Vice President Xi to Laura yeah. Meckler. Now, Laura, That's the budget came out yesterday. It's getting a lot of criticism today. Were you at any of those budget press conferences that uh, took place yesterday? Uh, yes. I, I, well, there was one big one that, that I was watching, yes. Right. And that was the one where um, Jack Lew, the, pro the budget OMB, the head of the OMB, or now the White House Chief of Staff, took people through the budget? Right. Yes, they, that, that's absolutely right. Right. Now, what would you think was the, what would you say was the sentiment in that room? Disbelief, outrage, shock at the president's budget? Well, I don't know how much time you've spent around, you know, reporters in terms of like, you know, Washington-based reporters. We don't really approach things quite that way. The people who are in that room were there to kind of understand the budget. There's a lot of subtleties in it, and you want to be sure you understand exactly what they're saying on this. Can they answer a question on that? So it isn't really a, a rally or a time when people are like, you know, how could you do this? It's not really the spirit. Right. But I did read Dana Milbank had an interesting piece today, I think, in the Washington Post. I think that's what he writes for. Anyhow, he basically said that all these reporters were like, but President Obama, how can he be putting this budget forward? And we're going to just go through some of the numbers here. The budget basically has outlays around 3.8 a trillion dollars. It has revenue sources of around 2.9 trillion dollars. That means it's almost another trillion dollar deficit and that's under a pretty optimistic scenario in terms of GDP growth in the U.S. This isn't like a real budget now, is it? Well, all president's budget proposals are just that, proposals. They don't become law unless Congress makes, turns them into law. And I don't think we're going to be seeing any deficit reduction of much of, of any stripe this year. Um, ne neither of the parties really have much of an incentive to make it happen um, in terms of making the compromises that would be necessary to get a bipartisan agreement. And that's true on both sides. The president's budget does not make a lot of the hard choices that are necessary on entitlement spending in order to get control of U.S. spending. And, of course, the Republicans are not interested in raising taxes, which is the other piece of the pie. So, no, I don't think we're going to see this budget enacted. I don't think we're going to see any serious deficit reduction this year at all. And so what's going to happen to that? Now they, they, do they give you a copy of that very thick budget book, which I'm sure you put on your uh, bedside table last night, Laura? What, do you, what, what is going to happen to that? Does that basically just disappear? Well, it basically serves two purposes. One, it's a political document. President Obama, as you all know, is running for re-election, and he's out there saying, these are my values, this is what I stand for. A lot of that has to do with asking the wealthiest Americans to pay more. Uh, families earning over $250,000 a year would see their taxes go up. He's sort of unapologetic about that. And he's saying, elect me, and that's what I'll be pushing for. So that's one piece of it. The other piece is that within the budget, you know, they've, Congress and the president, they already agreed to a trillion dollars of deficit reduction over a decade. And what is going to happen each and every year is they've sort of set a cap for the ins and outs of spending that gets approved each and every year. It's called discretionary spending. And in order to meet those caps, in order to come in under those caps, you have to make some tough choices about what programs get cut and what programs get extra money. And so President Obama also, you know, underneath in the guts of this budget, laid out his set of choices. And that will likely have some influence in Congress. Right. But, it, but basically, he takes his book, or somebody at the OMB takes his book and they hand it to Congress. But the Senate has no intention of acting on the budget, does it? Well, there's two separate issues. There's a there's sort of a, what's called a budget resolution, which is what is supposed to happen in Congress, is both sides pass their own sort of sense of what the budget should look like, sort of the broad outlines, they conference them together, come to an agreement, and then that governs the budgeting process. 
there are many years when they don't manage to do that and there's very poor prospects for com for doing that this year because you would have to have again a bipartisan agreement because the house is controlled by republicans the senate is controlled by democrats there's such a small prospect of that that basically harry reid has decided that he's not going to put his members through any tough votes just to have it sort of die in a conference committee so but we will still have a budget we still will have a, a spending plan for how the government's money is going to be spent in the upcoming year some programs are on kind of automatic pilot programs like social security and medicare those spent that spending happens no matter what but there's all this other programming there's defense spending there's you know things like heating and cooling assistance there's things like aid to hospitals i mean there's all sorts of spending that goes on in the government and they have to make those decisions and they will they'll have to